open his mouth, wandering around, and they've got chemical bins. The Royal Observer's not happy. There's a siren in the back. They should be looking for cover if they're hearing it. Now we've got the local siren going. read the D notice but he shouldn't come into sight. Now as you can see the Royal Observer's just on a bucket of water at the shed. He doesn't know what's in there. If the NFS could see him they'd have probably told him off because it could have been oil, could have been anything. In the meantime there's the Yardmaster and his assistant and even, well it looks like the Yardmaster's best friends down there and the oil drums have gone off. It appears that the Yunker 88 circling above Kidderminster have flown away, are quietly dropping their bombs on various areas along the railway tap. 
We can still hear them as they circling over the railway track, dropping their bombs, trying to cause as much disruption on the transport line. In the meantime, as you can see, we have the National Fair Service here. They are working hard to bring under control two very difficult fires. The shed is burning furiously, way more than they expected. So they're having to work very hard on that. In the meantime, they've had an oil fire. And as you can see, they're spraying foam over the oil cans because if you were to spray water onto oil, it would spit and spread the fire everywhere. The foam was produced by using animal blood. Some sources say pig blood, others say ox blood. But whatever it was, it was blood from animals used to create a foam. And it was the protein inside the blood that helped create the foam, smother the fire, and the water helped cool and dampen the surrounding areas. Now that they've got the foam all across the oil drums, they're also trying to use some of the water to spray around the oil drums and around the area with the shed to ensure that the fire does not spread. The mobile dam unit is the fire engine today that we're using. It holds 500 gallons. It's a Q Dodge and it's the only one in its original form as a mobile dam unit. It could carry a complement of six firemen and it had its own pump at the back. So it could go to places where there was very little water or even as a first response vehicle on sites such as aircraft sites, factories and here at Kidderminster station. In the background we can now hear the sirens saying the all clear but we have not been given the okay either by the Royal Observer or the Chief Officer on the ground but they have also been given the all clear and they will be awaiting to hear that siren in Kidderminster or on the station to sound. They will continue fighting as if a bomber could be coming back. officer on the ground will be mightily relieved as he can now focus on putting the reins of this fire out. In the meantime, many of his colleagues around Kidderminster will be fighting fires in major areas such as factories, other routes of transportation, and in fact I'm afraid it was your home that was second. And that is why the bucket and the stirrup pump for each of your homes would have been a vital line of defence against your house burning down. And what have we got here? Somewhere around here we've got a photographer trying to take photographs. I think the policeman's going to be very, very annoyed if he sees a photographer taking photographs, let alone the Royal Observer Corps. I wonder where they are. Oh, here he comes. This particular policeman knows this character very well and he's just apprehended him. Round of applause for the policeman. In the meantime, the National Fire Service are busy looking and assessing at the situation and they're almost coming to the conclusion maybe that this is a fire that will have to burn out by itself. That was sometimes the option if they needed to go somewhere else that was more urgent. If they hadn't received a call or a runner, they'd carry on firefighting until the fire was completely quenched. Lord Master Tom is not happy. His last tonight's sales, his whiskey is gone. I 
as you can see that some of our NFS gentlemen are not wearing the normal uniform. There's a couple of them that have got webbing across their jackets. They were the overseas NFS who were called upon in the January after D-Day to go into France and Belgium to help restore, repair, clear and be there if anything was to happen as they were clearing mines and bombs, houses that were being demolished, fires that were still burning and they were there. They shipped out in the January after D-Day to help firefight and, and help the French and the Belgium sort their properties and their routes of transport out. So they were battle dress with their gaiters around their boots and webbing with packs so they could be easily moved from place to place. And today they're here with our homeland NFS as they were supposed to be having some training today. Instead, they had to fight the fire for real. You can't see me. I'm the um, MC narrator for today and the sound effects. I am sitting way behind a diesel engine and the heat from the fire is even getting to us here as we have been setting off the pyros and sound effects for you. We can feel the fire from here. So could you imagine what it would be like if that had been your home? You'd want to get out very quickly if you could not control the fire. What they're using now is a, a, a nozzle which they can create a spray and sometimes this spray nozzle was very useful. They would use it as a protective measure for the fireman. One fireman would do a big spray while the other one would stand behind with a jet. And this is what is possibly going to be happening here. No, nope, they're actually just quenching the ground and sorting it out. But they had various tactics. One white spray acting as a shield for the fireman while putting a jet of water through the spray. And that was a very good way of firefighting because you could make sure that the direct jets were going into the heart of the fire while protecting the fireman. Chief officer is now calling everybody together. Checking to see if everybody is accounted for. He's brought the policeman over to inspect the site. Oh, it looks like Tom is not a happy man and neither is his friend. I think his friend had a pre-purchase sale in there. Looks like Tom is going to be done for bootlegging and so is his friend. The firemen now are smashing down all the wood. They're walking through it, beating it all down, making sure there's no flames traveling along or under the ground. Because we've had oil and alcohol in that shed, that would be a possibility. Okay. And the chief officer has now declared the area now clear. The fire is out, the pump is off. A job well done. And as you can see, this has taken almost 15 minutes to put this small fire out. You could imagine the heat and the dangers our National Fire Service had to face when bomb bombing raids and blitzes occurred across the country. So let's say thank you in commemoration for the brave men who fought to keep us safe within this country and for those who continue to do it today. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. By the way, it was the whiskey in the shed, Mr. Policeman has just told me. So let's say thank you, big one. And also say thank you for Kidderminster staff for letting us set places on fire. For all those that have been so supportive of us for this display, a big thank you to all of them, the signalman, the station master, and all the guards. We want to say thank you, Kidderminster and Southern Valley Railway for having us. Thank you very much. Have a good day.